This is my primary sound design station. It's based around my favorite polyphonic synthesizers, both analog and digital, as well as a collection of effects and different arrangements for effects routing to really customize the sound. I also like this station for writing the more melodic parts of my songs, such as chord progressions, arpeggiations, as well as various sorts of ambience, texture, and pads. The core of all of this is the Digitone keys. It's the primary MIDI controller, primary sequencer. It also routes some of the audio. And generally, it's just the hub that everything runs through. I use it to control both the Minilog XD as well as the Op6. Now, of course, I can use all of this as individual synths playing different parts. However, the, the Digitone is really all about layering. And it, internally, you can layer up to four different patches. So basically, you can split up the eight voice polyphony however you want. Currently, what I'm doing is two patches that have four voices each, and then the other two I'm not using. And then I'm layering that on top of the Minilog XD and the Op6. So I've got this massive sound by combining all three of these and treating them as if they were a single synthesizer. So let's explore that for a minute. For now, we'll start with just one of these sounds. So I've got the Digitone, just a single track, is going to be played right now. And I have the filters turned down and everything else. And then as I progress, I'll slowly turn the filter up.
That was the sound of two of the Digitone Keys tracks layered on top of each other, as well as the Op6 and the Mini Log XD. All four of those layers stacked up responding to the same notes. And that is what I love about this setup. And that really is the kind of design philosophy behind it. Instead of trying to create individual patches that are very complex, oftentimes it's more pleasing to take simpler patches and layer them on top of each other. That really is part of the philosophy of the Digitone in that it has this built-in layering functionality. And uh, so with this multi-timbrality, you can layer up to four internal patches and you can allocate a certain number of voices to each one. So if you wanted to split it evenly, you would have four different two voice patches, but you can also split it unevenly if you want. With the Op6, you have 32 note polyphony, so that's more than the rest of these. Um, and then with the XD, you have four note polyphony. And so generally, if I'm stacking them all like this, I'll kind of use that four note polyphony as the limit, and I'll treat all of these as four note uh, polyphonic synths, but you don't have to. You can also, of course, make uh, mono sounds with this, monophonic sounds if you want to. Uh, there's no, no limitation there. So when I sit down at this station, the experience that I'm chasing is being immersed in sound and sound design. Now, I do also do some amount of kind of songwriting here and sequencing, but I would say that's kind of secondary. The, the focus here is really emulating um, the way I learned to make music in the first place, which was sitting down at a piano and having just the piano keyboard and just those sounds to work with. Uh, now, of course, I can do way more with this than I can do with the piano, and I also have a much smaller keyboard. But uh, the idea here is that I just want to be able to sit down, turn it on, and start playing. And this has been fantastic for that. So the type of sounds uh, that I love to make at the station are things like this. Okay, so that was the Mini Log XD being controlled here by the Digitone. Or I might want to make sounds like this. So yeah, this station is all about the Digitone keys as being the primary interface uh, to kind of build your own synth behind. Uh, what I mean by that is it is, of course, its own beautiful FM synth. Um, but what's more interesting to me than that is to use it as the customizable interface for my other favorite poly synths, which are the Korg Minilog XD and the Korg Op6. Now, these two together, I think, are a beautiful combination because you've got the kind of basic, immediate, hands-on, uh, you know, subtractive synthesis of the XD, plus all of its digital effects and everything. I mean, this thing just sounds wonderful by its own. Um, it is also limited to four voice polyphony. Uh, so the Op6 steps in with 32 voice polyphony, um, way more than I'll ever need, and also a depth of sound design and synthesis possibilities that is just unmatched by almost anything. And so this is kind of like the XD is the more immediate, I know what I want type thing. And the Op6 is more like, I'm going to just explore making the craziest sounds and textures. And then the Digitone is kind of somewhere in between those. It's also great for sound design. It doesn't go anywhere near as deep as the Op6, but the, the workflows of these two are actually related. Like I think of the Op6 as the spiritual successor to the Digitone. Because if you already know how to use the Digitone, the Op6 is going to come really, really easily to you. Um, because the layout is basically the same. You see this, this bank of seven knobs here, this bank of eight knobs here um, are corollary. And the way things are laid out with one button per page, one button per page, it's all very, very similar. And so 
it's it's a really easy kind of thing to step between these two. Uh, so the, the digitone I use for more kind of the bread and butter sounds um, that are a bit simpler. I'm mostly picking for presets on here. The Op6, I definitely use presets as well, but I like to, you know, go deep into sound design with this one. And if I really want to just sit down, if I have like an hour to just create a patch from scratch, I love doing it on the Op6. It's wonderful. So this is my own kind of hacked version of the, the Op6 uh, module or the Chop six or desktop six, if you will. Um, these are, you know, my my take on what other people have done. There is now an official product, uh, you know, that will do this. And of course, Korg has now released finally the module version of this, uh, which is, I'm sure, better than what I did. Um, I'm I'm happy with this for now in that it's functional, it works. I do want to keep iterating on this and making it better. The primary mistake I made is that the angle I set here, I believe was 15 degrees, and that's too shallow. Um, I think this one needs to be at 30 degrees. And I think that's actually what the Digitone face here is, is about 30 degrees, and that's that feels right. Um, I love though having these polysynths be just kind of an extension of the keyboard, the way that they're directly above it. I can sit centered on the keyboard and just think of this as kind of one single synth. And these knobs here, I can map out to particular parameters on here, which is great. I mean, I don't really need to because they're all right here, but especially with the Op6, there's parameters that maybe are, you know, buried in menus that I don't have the ability to get to really quickly. I can do that here if I want to. But the main thing, honestly, is just being able to map out like a single knob to control the filter cutoff on both synths simultaneously. That type of thing allows you to kind of glue them together and make it feel like you're just playing one synth instead of two separate ones. And I really love layering sounds. Like the Digitone is all about layering. Um, it's four internal tracks can all be layered to make a single massive sound. And then with its uh, you know, external MIDI controller mode, you can layer all four of the internal patches on here on top of however many external uh, synths you want. So with this setup, I can just have these huge lush sounds. And it's, it's really, it's fun. I just, I love, even though there's, there's all this multi-temporality, I often like using it as a monotemporal synth and just getting massive uh, kind of layered textured sounds out of this. It's, it's wonderful. So that's really the focus of this station. Originally, I thought this was going to be kind of my, my songwriting station where like when I want to be, you know, quote unquote serious about making music, I would sit down here and do it all here. Um, I found that it hasn't really worked out that way because I actually prefer my portables for more of my kind of sequencing and songwriting workflow. Um, and that's okay, because if I'm sitting here and I, I've designed a sound, uh, a lot of times that sound kind of inspires some sort of song around it. And I have all the sequencing capability I need here in the Digitone keys ready to go. Um, there is conspicuously not a drum machine here. I do have the black box up here at the moment, but I'm using this purely to record the same way you'd use a field recorder. So I'm not using that to make sound at all. And um, the, the Digitone with its multi-temporality can easily be a drum machine, but it's not my favorite drum machine. It's, it's a little bit harder to get all your drum sequencing all crammed into one track or maybe two tracks um, versus the other ones I'll show later. They allow you to spread out a lot more and it's just a lot easier and faster. And so when I make drums on this, they're very basic. It's basically just a stand-in for a metronome, something for me to play along with. So it'll be like, you know, four on the floor, kick and snare pattern, something like that. Um, and anytime I make drums on this, I make it with the intention of probably replacing them later. Uh, but in some cases, you know, the really simple drum beats just work with the type of music I end up making here. And so I just record it as is. Now, um, all of this sound design power and potential, it all gets routed out uh, through the Digitone um, I, I don't have quite enough input, so there are some uh, things that bypass the Digitone, and they go into this mixer right here. So this mixer, um, I absolutely love. Um, so the way I'm using this is each of the four mono inputs here, I'm using to correspond to the four internal tracks on the Digitone here. It allows me uh, to drive the, the signal from the Digitone in a way that's really, really pleasing. Okay, so what excites me about this 
is that I can take these otherwise very clean digital signals out of the Digitone and run them through what is effectively an analog overdrive type effect. Because I'm driving the microphone preamps in this, which are purely analog, um, and I can get these, this really kind of beautiful, I think, distorted sound out of it. So the, the trick with this, because I'm running a line level output into a mic input, it's way too hot. So inside the Digitone here, I have to turn the level of each of these tracks way down. So I found that the, the kind of sweet spot is about 30. So this right now is going into track three. That's super quiet. Um, I have, let me turn it up here a bit. Okay, so this is just an init patch on the Digitone, which is just pure sine waves to start with. Okay, so it's kind of the simplest, cleanest, most boring sound you can get, right? And again, I'm treating this as a mono sound right now. So listen what happens when all I do is turn up the level output of the Digitone. So you can see the needles here, they start redlining. And uh, you know, I have to kind of play with the two levels of each of these uh, to get it the way I want. And But basically I get this overdrive distortion type sound. So again, that's just pure sine wave running through, uh, you know, an analog drive effectively, and that's it. <laughs> and I, I just find this to be such a wonderful well of sound design and such a cool starting point because I have so much potential still of what I can do within the Digitone on with that as the foundation of the sound. So I really, really love this mixer as a pairing with the Digitone or really any, you know, digital synth um, because it allows it to just sound so like gritty and raw and like all those things we love about kind of the analog drift of analog oscillators and filters and all that you can kind of get some of that that magic from here so this is my little like diamond in the rough uh mixer definitely it's a bit of a challenge it took me a while to get all this balanced and the levels right and everything to like make it work but i'm finding it super rewarding it's awesome so um i also have the input of the Digitone, uh, I'm taking the output of the op 6 over here and routing that to the input of the Digitone. And then the main outs of the Digitone uh, go here into the Zoya. So the, the Zoya is my primary multi-effects pedal. Uh, so that's what I'm using to process a lot of stuff together. And I'm primarily using this as a, as a reverb pedal right now. So I have a whole bunch of reverb algorithms in there that I've loaded up. Some of them do reverb plus other stuff, but the core of this I'm using is to add a bunch of reverb to stuff. I should probably cover just quickly how the Digitone works. When you go into the MIDI mode, you have four tracks of MIDI sequencing here. So I'm currently only using two of them, one for the XD, one for the OP6, and I still have two more I could add. And I have added other things in the past, but I found it just kind of overcomplicates things or it's more than I need. Um, I am considering using it to sequence MIDI through the Zoya, and also this other uh, Dr. Scientist desk pedal has a MIDI input, so I could use it for things like that. Again, that's a little, little out of scope for now, but um, for now I'm just using it for these two. Okay, so on the Digitone here, I have um, these, you know, these channels, uh, these MIDI channels, where I have them pre-mapped out to uh, the, the synths here. Now, there is basically the only way to make templates in any of the electrons is to have a project file which you then uh, you know, make copies of and where things are pre-mapped out. It is not that much time to just kind of redo the mapping on the fly as well, so sometimes I, I just do that. Because um, basically all you have to do is you have to tell the MIDI controller mode which MIDI channels you want to send out to, and then you have to tell the MIDI tracks which channels you want to sequence, and that's basically it. Um, there's definitely fancier things you can do if you want to map out you know, the 
aftertouch and the mod wheel and all that kind of stuff. And so that's where a template is nice if you want to have all that stuff pre-mapped. But if you just want to sit down and play, it's not totally necessary. The way I have this, uh, the OP6 is my track three because it's green. And uh, track four is my XT because I've always thought of it as purple. I don't know why it's black, obviously, but um, yeah, the XT is purple in my mind. And so that makes sense. Um, red, I have correlated to the syntax because it's got the red button. And that, so basically red is always drums. If I had a drum machine here that I wanted to link to one of these, I would use red for that. And then yellow, I would use for bass. I used to have the Typhon here. And I love the Typhon, but ultimately I just wasn't using it that much. And I have all the base generation capabilities I need here, so I just removed it from the setup to simplify things. So um, these two are currently unused, but they're available as needed. So here I have my Op6. Currently making this insane atmospheric sound. And then I have my XD. It's lovely polysynth thing. So um, this also has the the MIDI controller mode. Like this this uh, MIDI mode is really more for sequencing. And the main downside here is that it does not pass through these wheels. So like for example, here's you know my XT. You see pitch pitch bend doing nothing. Um, now on the Digitone keys, if you turn on this, uh, for what they call it external control mode or something like that, um, this can be set to override this, it can be set to layer on top of this, you can do it kind of however you want, and it's, it's not hard to change. You go in here and you basically tell it, okay, first of all, what MIDI channel output do you want, but then you can also set it, you know, do I want this to control only the external thing, or do I want to layer the external thing on top of my Digitone engines, or do I want to layer multiple external things on top of multiple Digitone engines? You can do all of it, um, and you can map, you know, whether you want these knobs and these knobs to send, so like it's actually pretty nice if you wanted to have the knobs above the keyboard here control your external thing, and these knobs only control the internal, you can do that. And then likewise, mod wheel and pitch bend, you can have them send kind of wherever you want. So now when I play the XD, I get pitch bend. I also get mod wheel. As well as aftertouch, um, you know, all that kind of stuff. So this basically solves the major problem with the Digitone module, which doesn't have this capability, um, and that is wonderful. So uh, that's, I would say that's the primary, one of the primary reasons why I love the Digitone keys over the module, because it has that extra functionality, the module doesn't, and also because it really is just well laid out. It's well thought out, um, because there's no cable connections right above the keyboard, so you can have it be flush up against these kind of uh, desktop style synths right above it, and I think that is key. All the cables are over on this section here. Okay, now getting back to the audio routing. So I have the four individual outs going to my uh, my Rolls mixer here, as I said before. But on the way to that mixer, there's the opportunity to pass them through an effects pedal if I want to. So yeah, I typically use this for more like bass drone type of sounds. Um, and just if I want to have a delay that, you know, I have direct knobs to tweak, um, it's nice for that. I'm still a little on the fence about this one. Um, it's it's fine for what it is, but I also have a lot of other delays that sound very similar. So it's kind of, yeah, it's fine. Um, but this is something that uh, I may still experiment with and change out in the future. And that's really the purpose of this space being blank is it allows, gives me a place to put, bring things in, take them away, experiment, change around the routing uh, between the Digitone and the mixer, adding in different effects change and whatever. So that's why I like having a bit of blank space here um, that gives me the ability to kind of quickly do that without having to rearrange everything, right? Okay, so my track one on my Digitone is again what I generally use for drums. Um, and sort of just a stand-in metronome type beat to play along to, nothing too fancy in the drums. Um, so I have that individual out going through this dust pedal right now. So this dust pedal is uh, effectively just an external analog filter uh, with a built-in 
envelope LFO, uh, some things you can automate and you can actually control it over MIDI, which I haven't tried yet. Um, but you know, it's just a pretty standard low pass filter. So again, I can use, it's going through this mixer, uh, track number one here, and I can use it to drive the drums if I want, some kind of overdrive on that. Cool. So it's a nice little effect. Um, it's not really the focus on my station, and also the, the dust pedal here is another one that I would consider, uh, you know, in an evaluation phase, like I may end up replacing this with something else or maybe nothing in the future, I don't know. Um, it's fine for what it is right now. It is nice having dedicated, you know, filter control knobs and volume when you need it, but I don't do that much drum sound design here anyway, so it's a little bit of an afterthought. Now, um, because the, there is also a, a fifth kind of hidden input on the, the rolls here, there's a stereo input on the back that doesn't have any knobs on the front. It just gets passed straight through. And that one is actually line level. Um, so that one's intended to be um, coming you know, from, I don't know, CD player or something. And um, that one is where I have the XD routed because the XD has enough internal effects that I don't really feel the need to pass it through an external effects processing chain. Um, and so yeah, I just have it go through here and it's basically just a straight pass through. The rolls doesn't do much with it. Now the output of the rolls um, then goes into the rear input of the, um, this is the Scarlet 6i6 Gen 2, I think. So this is the audio interface that I bought years ago when I first got into all this stuff. And it's been fine, it's nothing special. It has, uh, basically it's two stereo inputs that it can use. Um, and so one of them is coming from the mixer. The other, the ones on the front here, is the uh, output of my Zoya here. So the, everything that I pass through the Zoya um, does not go through any analog effects. This is like a purely digital effects, you know, multi-effects unit, mixer and all that. Or not mixer, but um, this is a fully digital path when I send things through the Zoya. And that just goes into the front inputs of this. And now the output uh, from the back of that goes to where I'm recording, currently into the black box. Um, I also, of course, have the output going to these speakers. Uh, these are, by the way, the Presonus 3.5s, like near field speakers. Um, for the price, they're great. I have zero complaints with them, and like they fit nicely. I know the speaker placement is not ideal, and they should probably be mounted up on the walls and stuff. I am all might do that eventually, but frankly, I almost never use them. Most of the time when I sit down here, it's late at night, and I have to play into headphones anyway. So I don't care to put a lot of time into the speaker setup. Um, also, they really are designed to be used with a subwoofer, which I don't have at this station. And um, so if I was going to put more time into this, I would start by adding a subwoofer. But uh, for what they are, they're fine. I think they sound great. And, um, you know, price is certainly right. But again, I'm mostly pl plugging into headphones, and I'll just either plug into the headphone output right here on the front or the headphone output of the black box if that's what I'm recording into. I'll just move this up here so you can see it a little better. So that um, is how that is all working and being routed. Um, I do also have the ability to go, you know, USB out of the Digitone, use Overbridge and multi-track that way. I don't do that uh, mostly out of laziness. I'm fine with just recording a master stereo output of all of this, and that's been serving me serving me well. So it's it's just a lot simpler, and it allows me to play with all these kind of external effects and things. It's been really fun. So yeah, I think that kind of sums up this station. Um, it's really about sound design and exploring kind of the depth of sound I can get from different synthesis techniques and different kind of processing effects chains, uh, you know, analog overdrive, stuff like that. It's really fun uh, for just kind of exploring textures and ambience. Uh, but I, I do make, you know, kind of full compositions here as well. Um, this is my favorite station. It's probably my, uh, obviously it's my least portable because just taking this all apart, rerouting all the cables and all that is just a pain. So I try to just not touch this as much as possible and just let it be what it is. The area where I let, allow myself to explore and try different things is in the post-processing effects. But in terms of the synthesis and the routing and all that, I try to just keep it as is. Um, the other thing, uh, I, I currently have this just on a basic piece of smooth plywood sitting on a four-leg stand 
uh, the jam stands, and that's working fine for now. I, I do intend to make myself a really nice table uh, for this at some point in the future, but for now, this is fine. And yeah, it's a, it's a really lovely station to just sit down when I just want to play keys, and uh, that's, that's what I do with it.